Welcome back to another installment, week seven of Le Bulk. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm working with for legs. I switched it up a little bit, not too much. I usually like to stick with the basics regardless, especially for legs. My legs just grow better when I have more compound work and then just sticking with the leg isolations and typical hamstring curls and such. But weight this morning, 199.6, very hefty on the scale. I'm feeling great though. The main priority for the first six weeks after the show was getting back to normal levels or feeling normal not wanting to fucking have sex with every burrito that I saw not having any cravings just completely normal That's where I'm at now. You can't really begin to feel normal until like after 9-10% body fat outside of that Your body is just not prioritizing putting on muscle The best thing you can do post show is get back to normal levels around 10% body fat and then you can go from there I gained a little bit more body fat than I wanted to post show because your body will prioritize putting on body fat after a show It's just hypersensitive and stress the fuck out. Food that you're feeding it, it's scared that you're gonna continue to starve yourself so it stores it, stores fat because it thinks that you're gonna go in starvation mode again. That's what happens. We got it out of the way. I feel good. I'm gonna pull back for like three weeks. The plan was to assess after six weeks, see where I'm at. If I needed it a correction phase and to pull back, then I would like I am now. So I was eating 3,200 calories like you guys saw on the full day of eating. I'm bumping it down to 2,500 because my maintenance is 3,000. So I'm gonna be in a 500 calorie deficit for three weeks should be good and then wherever i land up there then i'll start increasing calories it's more so giving my body room to bulk because it wouldn't be productive to just keep increasing calories at my body fat that i am now i lose body fat pretty fucking easy so i'm not that worried we'll see where i end up after three weeks but i'm pretty confident we'll be looking sick nasty i enjoyed the food post show i indulged a couple times i mean we went to hawaii <laughs> we definitely partook in some grub it's all good. First real show. You live and you learn. Where are you gonna hop on stage? Oh hell no! I already told you, dude. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fucking. I'm about to run a marathon. Would you now. do physique? <laughs> Damn, that shit hurt me. <laughs> well, with your back tattoo, that'd be sick. Dude, that would be gnarly. The judges wouldn't like that shit though. You could do boxing. Facts. You say you've been fighting, right? Yeah, been doing dude. some boxing shit. Call them out. Dude, out. I don't know call because listen, <laughs> listen. People be like calling people out like it's. That, like they don't have to box boxing is one of the fucking hardest endurance it sports is. the cardio that i'm doing is the fucking 10 minute walks after my <laughs> meals you're a little bit tired and then someone gets you right in the right place in the temple you're out cold oh. that would be so embarrassing <laughs> i'd be second round yeah, everyone thinks they're fucking baki till they actually have to put on the fucking gloves <laughs> yeah what you got it's that blue raz enraged we're trying to get enraged for his leg day we're gonna start off with Quad extensions, Metallica mix on Spotify. Always reliable. Leg extensions first. I'm gonna get warmed up. I take about two sets of warming up. This is a great pre exhaust. I got hack squats after this, so when I do a pre exhaust with leg extensions, I get all the bang for my buck at hack squats because I'm pretty quad dominant. So on hack squats, I'm able to feel my hamstrings and glutes a lot more because my quads are fried on this. The flex one specifically. On the flex one, it's tilted like this, so you get real high up on the quad. This Damn. part, which matters, because when you're in a thong on stage, it'll show all that detail. You monkey don't hit it as much as this one. If you have access to that one, use it, it's good. We're trading harder, not longer, so we're not gonna be in here long. If it was training longer, which isn't the case because that's fucking endurance training, and we're not training aerobics, then everyone would be in this bitch 10 hours, right? The more equals better applies in a lot of other places, but not in the fucking gym. We're here to train hard, and then we get out of here and recover. Uh, with programming, for the slight deficit, I'm not gonna be doing partials during that phase because I'm not really gonna be optimizing muscle building. Plus, I wanna be able to still recover and I don't wanna lose muscle. So that's what we're doing. We still hitting failure, RP10. We just ain't cranking out that extra. You want to move the weight with full muscular control, no momentum, your muscle just squeezing the weight up. We're bodybuilders, we ain't weightlifters. I mean, if you're a weightlifter, that might be a different story. My main objective is building some big ass squats. I slide by, coming at you in high five. What up? Trying to see if you pussies got nine lives. Pull up. Every time I don't feast, I find God. Turn your corpse to bread, turn your blood into wine. Mr. Disinfected, heart pumping, garbage still clogging my veins. I remember nights of loneliness, a day full of pain. With the 
battles, I will battle till I hemorrhage my brain. Synthetic plus have me days for days. I will succumb to my weakness, craze from the drinking. Locked in a mode, no control over thinking. Weight up on my shoulder, can I carry it no more? It is on you in my eyes on slow mo. <laughs> Right there. This is last week, 270 for eight. Hit 11. Hack squat. Main priority for this is trying to get the most knee flexion possible while keeping a good stable base. You can find that out for yourself without weight. You pretty much want to go to where you get the most knee flexion at the bottom that you can possibly get without your heels rising because the more further back you'll go, the more it turns into like a Tom Platts hack squat. If you want to do that, by all means, we're not doing that. I'm doing the standard one, but yeah, you can play around with foot placement. I'll just do that without weight and then you can start to add weight. Make sure you're feeling it in the right place and it feels comfortable for you before you start adding weight or else you might snap your shit up. I've done it wrong. I was a little dumbass in the gym at one point. I still think I am. I got a lot to learn, but I was more so of a dumbass. Standard hack, I don't know. I'm gonna play around with the warm up to see how much weight I'm gonna be working with. I'm probably gonna start with like two plates and feel it out. some more that's enough I was doing like five plates before but I will admit I was using a lot of momentum you live and you learn there ain't no due date for this the shit's a lifestyle take everything with a grain of salt implement what works get rid of what doesn't but what does work for everyone is training with intensity there's some things that just work for everyone modern day medicine wouldn't be a thing if there wasn't a base foundation for some things for humans and that base foundation for building muscle is putting as much intensity as possible into the fucking weights you're lifting and then resting equally as much so so you can grow and get big as fuck I saw my dog. Damn. <laughs> Coco, my old bulldog. Rest in peace. I saw him. I saw him on that sixth rep. He said, you got another one, buddy. I died on the sixth one, and I came back and I did another one. Hamstring time. Ham tractor is what it's called by Flex Fitness. It seems like it's at an angle, too. So instead of having to, you know when you see Sam lean over, uh -huh. and he like, Pause. Uh -huh. Ham, hamstring fucks the machine. It look, you works. That's what I do on like the standard one. You can lean over because you get a better stretch and a better feeling contraction. So this one's lean for you. I noticed that flex fitness machines prioritize the contraction. So we're gonna see how it works. Okay. He told me like Part weeks two. ago. Yeah. He's like, bro, I have this Pantera shirt. I told him I fucked with Pantera because of the 10s in the show day video. I missed him in concert because I was prepping and shit. That's so sweet. Thank you, uh, dog. Yeah, and Code Marky. Yeah, yeah. Done with thighs. I'm gonna move on to calves. Same goes for calves. I like to keep things six to 10 reps with calves too. I just make sure to keep things under control. It's not like six quick reps by any means. Like I said, a second and a half on the way up, squeezing the weight up with your calf, no momentum, and then controlling on the way down 
because we're stronger on the eccentric. Ditch that ego shit. Nobody really gives a fuck about how much weight you lift. People are caring less and less about the bench press and be becoming more afraid of it because people are tearing their pecs left and right and shit. Six to ten reps on this. Standing calf raise. And then we'll move on to a seated movement. I like to start with standing though. Make sure you get that full stretch at the bottom. No momentum. We're going to get big calves together or attempt to against all odds. Thanks, Dad. I just gotta tap in for real. I haven't been training calves this whole damn time. I would like train them series for like three weeks, be like, ah, it's just my genetics, and then give up. You don't fucking know until you try at the end of the day. So you could have some meaty ass calf genetic DNA in them calves, but you just ain't been putting in the work. You reap what you sow, baby. So I'll probably do 460. Now we'll do 440. I wanna get closer to 10 reps. First time. Knew it was like very unlikely that I'd win an NPC show, especially first time around, first time competing, so I just want to get my feet in the water. Dude, the nerves, I was sweating, I was shaking, I thought I was cooling. Yeah. Posing in my bedroom, that comfy ass, 71 degree environment. That life hits you. That shit hits you. <laughs> Real fast. But then the natural show was sick. They ran it really well, it was awesome, because I flew to California for it, so okay. I was kind of nervous. The difference is like crazy with even taking pictures and like lighting like this, because backstage it's, you got cold feet on the right, right. tile, you got to plan the pump up, you're on their time. The first time I went on stage, I didn't even like time shit right. I had like a whole sleeve of rice Krispies yeah. waiting backstage. The show was like seven hours, yeah. so you don't plan for that. It was a sick experience though. Very humbling. That's how it was for me. Like going to nationals, NPC, like local show. It's like high school, yeah. the national stage, yeah. college, pro level, NFL, you know? Yeah. So when I first got the nationals and uh, looking around, like we we're not in the little leagues anymore. Like everybody <laughs> yeah. looks amazing. Everyone's looking good. 35 on guys it. in their class, everyone's top notch. So it's a beautiful thing because it's like, you see what the competition is. Yeah. If you want to continue going, you know, yeah. and you realize, all right, I have this, I need this, I need that. Yeah. At the end of the day, that competition isn't there with you when you're eating the meals, exactly. when you're doing the posing practice, when you're putting the work in. So it's honestly up to you. And then whoever the fuck shows up, shows up, I guess. Right. I didn't really know who was going to show up. And that guy showed up and fucking took my pro card, essentially. <laughs> so I'm pissed. Yeah. But then I go back to the drawing board. I'm fucking obsessed. Yeah. I, oh, I lost. Oh, am I gonna fucking cry about it? No, I'm gonna get big. Exactly. Get a taste of it. I'm like, all right. Oh, I want. I want to come back. I want to come back better. I want to come back this. And yeah. Like that. At that point, it's like you're not worrying about you know Instagram posts from everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's like it's you and you and yep. your heads down and you're grinding. Yeah. I I'm, know for me, I turn off Instagram like three, four weeks out. It's like I don't need the noise. Yeah. That's how I was. I was very much so. I don't really consume a lot of content. Yeah. I just like making it. Yeah. So all the posts that I post, I mean, it's a plus if I look cooler. Yeah. When I was shredded, I was like, dude, this is like, I can do anything. I look cool in pictures. This is sick. Well, I wish you all the best with everything. Thank you. Yeah. I was just putting off any calves. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to work, baby. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Three bad bitches. are made in the kitchen but it's like any other muscle mine suck I need to train them so Hey, 
shit, bro. something on his mind speak to the people i'm getting pretty fucking fed up with seeing all of these people that think they know everything and then putting limits on what people can attain especially naturals i think it's bullshit to even talk about limits when there is genetic outliers out there imagine a genetic outlier stumbles across a video that says this is the high end of what's attainable naturally or whatever in general in the gym and then that puts them down. What if they're a really vulnerable mindset and they're looking for you for inspiration to push them past that edge so they can actually try and push their limits and get something out of the gym rather than just going through the fucking motions like most people do with the gym and then see this bullshit limit and what it dilutes their mind. You don't fucking know unless you try. You could be that small percentage. Dude, shut the fuck up that has freak genetics, that builds muscle, no problem. You don't fucking know unless you try. That's with everything. And trying is another thing. You have to be so fucking obsessed. The first eight years were hoodie over my head, wired headphones in my ears, max volume, bumping SoundCloud, doing 10 by 10s on squats when nobody was fucking looking. The difference is what you do when nobody is looking and that's what separates you. That's the only way you'll be able to find out truly what you're capable of. Truly whatever genetic limit you have, fucking bullshit, you won't know unless you try. Half the people who have really made it or made a difference, everyone told them they can't do it. When I was 150 pounds and I was telling people, I wanna pursue fitness full time, I wanna dedicate my life to fitness because it truly changed my life, people laughed in my face. They laughed at my progress pictures, they laughed at the pictures I was posting in the metaverse getting fucking 300 likes for years, bro. That didn't change my thought process. That didn't take me off of the path to my goal. I mean, you can either be in the driver's seat or you can be fucking Ubering and let life take you wherever it takes you. Or you can grab firm on that steering wheel and take your life wherever the fuck you want to take it. Just fucking, oh, people are talking shit. Roll up your window and keep fucking going. And then when you run out of gas, you can take breaks. You can be real with yourself, you can take breaks, you can adjust, but at the end of the day, you're the one fucking driving, bro. It's all up to you, up here. Drive the fucking car to where you wanna go, baby. Bro, if I let any of those bastards that told me I couldn't be here, or wherever I wanted to be, with the gym or in life in general, I wouldn't fucking be here, because I wouldn't have tried. I wouldn't have been recording this video, I wouldn't have met Drew, I wouldn't have done a lot of things. So you don't know unless you try. It comes down to you, and whether you want it bad enough, be fucking obsessed and you can get anywhere. I'm watching too much Greg Plitt. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys need some new content, fucking look up Greg Plitt or look up Blood and Guts, Dorian Yates, or look up any of Mike Menser or Arthur Jones' interviews or seminars. You're gonna learn some shit about yourself in the gym. I'm thought process for the next three weeks. Like I said, I mentioned it in the gym a little bit. I was fully expecting to do the first six weeks, not bulking season, but road to feeling normal. After a bodybuilding prep, your body isn't in the best position. It's stressed, overtrained. Your metabolism is wrecked from dieting. Your body is not prioritizing putting on muscle by any means until it's at around nine to 10% body fat range, the research says, but until then, it's kind of just keeping things slow and slowly getting back to normal, getting back into the normal habits. Post-show, you're almost hypersensitive to storing body fat. Your body doesn't want to go through what it went through during prep again, so it's gonna store fat, anything over your maintenance calories, is just gonna be twice as likely to be fat stored. It's not really the same as going off of a normal cut and then going into a bulk. That's a lot different protocol. That usually you can just hop straight into a calorie surplus and you should be fine, but kind of tricky. And I didn't have a coach. Definitely each day that I indulged and ate over, I paid the consequences. 
and I stored a little bit more body fat, but the next three weeks are just gonna correct that so I can have a lot more room so that I can have a long and successful bulk. It wouldn't be productive to start it right now. I would kind of just start gaining more and more fat and I would get to what I would want to be my end point a lot sooner and I'll just start to feel like shit. Yeah. My main priority was getting back to feeling like normal. So the next three weeks aren't gonna be any task. I'm gonna be in a 500 calorie deficit for the next three weeks. And then from that end point, I'm gonna increase calories and then hopefully have a long successful bulk and we'll play it by eye. Trying to beat my program every time I'm in the gym, sleeping, eating enough, streaming, playing games. Don't think I'm like tapping out of the bulk or anything by any means, because y'all already know if you're OGs, I am all about that bulk life. I just wanna put myself in a good position to have a long and successful bulk. But yeah, after three weeks, I'm just gonna hop into a slight surplus, just like before. I'll probably start with 3000 calories and then I'll slowly start climbing. Each time I plateau, I'll just add 200 calories. You just keep having to eat more. Your body will get used to it and you just can't keep having to slam more food. At the end of the day, you gotta get the food down, whether that be in shake form, it's still got to go down already but ladies and gentlemen with that being said that is going to be a wrap for the video this week slap that like button in the ass for me till next time peace out baby